Hello, people of the internet. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and happy Saturday to all, or happy whatever day of the week it is when you may be watching this. I am nursing a little bit of a hangover today. Um, I had my program's welcome party last night for my uni program, and I probably drank the most I've ever drank out in public, uh, like in a public setting. And I'm kind of like not in the greatest of conditions at the moment. It doesn't help that I don't really drink at all to begin with. Uh, probably that was probably the first time I drank in about eight nine months or so, which is which was great for me because well I had a I had a blast of a time. Then I woke up and I was not happy about it. But you know what? I'm gonna we're gonna push through it. I've got. As much natural light going on as possible. I don't have the ring light on. I've got just sunlight basking through the veranda door. I've got nice cup of tea going on. I'm just ready to take in some great music. Because it's Saturday and that means OST Saturdays is back. Welcome to episode 2 of season 2 of OST Saturdays. Our weekly roundup of OSTs that have dropped over the course of the past 7 days or so. And we've got... A little bit of Stray Kids Sungman. Very exciting time. I love his voice. A little bit of end flying. Get to jump on board as a K band. That's always very exciting. Miss Hayes one time. Gonna be basking in the glorious mellow vocals. And the entirety of Stray Kids on a song specifically from a Japanese, I think it's a drama, a Fuji uh Fuji Terebi drama. And then finishing up with a little XG and Valorant one time, which will be, I think be very exciting to check out. So if you want to skip ahead to a certain song of your choice, you're more than free to do so. The timeline below is going to tell you exactly what we're watching or listening to. And if you're in it for a long haul like me, welcome aboard. Let me roll the intro real quick and I will see you for track number one. Here we go. Righty-o. Um, I will give this disclaimer again. Um, I mentioned it last week, but this year I'm going to try and limit as much as like the, especially when it comes to drama stuff, just try and limit the amount of, uh, what do you call it, drama OST MVs, mainly because those MVs take shots and clips and videos from the show itself, and TV companies don't like me posting those. I mean, we had a pretty good hit and miss rate with it, but it wasn't perfect. And whenever we did, it's a lot of extra work to go around, cut over it, like paste over it, re-upload it, like render, re-upload, do all that. So we're going to try and minimize that as much as possible. If there's like an official lyric video for it that doesn't include like moving images, or if there's live clips of it, we'll run those if I could find them at the time of recording. There's certain, like, OST stuff that we can run the MVs for, like, XG's Valorant, like, Riot Games are usually pretty good with that kind of stuff, so I think we'll be okay with running that, but, yeah, that's kind of like the admin stuff out of the way, and let's get started with song number one, Mr. Sigmin, this is gonna be great fun indeed, I don't really care what type of song this is, because it's Mr. Sigmin's voice, and his voice is glorious, so, Destiny from Norma Midnight Studio, here we go. Bump up the volume in my ears a little bit. Off to a great start already. Wow, what a long sustain to start. Sit really low. Low power, low end of vocal register, loads of emotion though. Very soft. Let the song grow a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
Nice flip. Love that. Possibly one of the cleanest head voice flips I've ever heard from some Manon. Oh, then takes it all the way back down, lets the vibrato carry that phrase out. Mm. That first verse was chef's kiss. Instrumental part. Hello, cello in the background. Good to see you. This is definitely a bias point. But I love getting strings in a song like this. I think it adds to the emotiveness of it. We got a big growth though, but it's still growing. Ooh. Give it some punch. The head voice flip the second time there. Loves that the second chorus we got the full body like chest high chest voice too. And this bridge, it has a drop down at all, it's still growing. Oh, like jumping off of the chorus, it's still growing. Flip it off into that delicate, breathy voice. Oh, should not have done that. Oh, there's the headache. Let the piano carry it out. Sustain, sustain, sustain. <sighs> it's a very nice song. It's a very nice song. Honestly, I, I can't name all the OSTs that I've heard from the Stray Kids members just en masse. But I feel like this might be the cleanest Sungmin OST I've heard full stop. It's vocally, it's so good. It's so clean all the transitions are super clean i think the emotiveness of this is absolutely spectacular the way his voice kind of changes along with the song the way the song grows along with Sunman's voice nothing is out of place everything is exactly how i want it to grow everything is exactly where i want things to be and Sungmin just changes it up enough every single time for me to just be so invested in it, no matter what he does. I can just, I feel the very soft but wide vibrato he has in that lower register in the first one. I feel the powerful high chest voice in chorus two. I feel that transition from the bridge into the final chorus. The way he goes, power, power, power. And then kind of tapers it away with the breathiness, starts breathy, and then takes the power back up again, like a, like a mathematical graph. It's just, oh, everything's so smooth, and the transitions are so smooth, and his voice is so smooth, and the song is so smooth. And you get my point. That's spectacular. Rightio, we move. N flying. This is gonna be fun. Haven't checked out N flying in a hot minute, I feel like, but this is Star from Lonely Runner. 
Caveman is going to be a great time. OSTs is going to be a great time. Put two and two together, I reckon this is going to be a good time. Here we go. Guitar, guitar part's got a nice bite to it. I swear to God, if, if stills from the show gets this thing, like, content blocked, I'm gonna be livid. But the song, though? It's bright, but it's got bite to it. All across the board. Oh, grow it again. Got the high powerful voices. It's got the slightly crunchy guitar. It's got a good bass part. It's got a nice drum part. Yeah, I love this. It's just an easy song to listen to. I think the pacing's really good too. It's not too fast, but it's got that kind of like toe tapping feel. It's a beat and a pace that's really easy to enjoy, I think. I do find it interesting that the chorus, at least the transition into the chorus, almost feels like it's starting from the second half of the chorus just because it goes that extra kind of bright level to it. Hello guitar solo, good to see ya. Very cool little detail to overlap the end of the solo with a vocal part of the bridge. Let it ring. Let it ring. Oh, yes. Mm. That post-chorus might be my favorite part of the song. Oh, oh, that's very nice. I like, it's a, it's just a nice, I don't want to call it a light rock tune because it's not light really, but it's just, it's got a really nice rock bite to it. It's really nice. I think the energy for it is really nice. It's not like overly aggressive and it's not fast. It's not overly fast, but it's got the kind of liveliness that I want from a song like this. I could definitely see myself listening to this just on my walk to the train station to go to school or something, something along those lines. You know, it's a it's a everyday life kind of song for me. And I like I like a song like that. That that one's going on the playlist. Okay, Miss Hayes, um, for a webtoon, webtoon OSCs, yeah, webtoon OSCs, I never really understood, because, like, reading a webtoon, and then, there's sometimes you get soundtracks to it, and I never really think of, like, reading a webtoon, and then having that webtoon have 
music attached to it, if that makes sense. Like, I very much grew up on printed comics. Not, like, webtoons or anything like that. Like, I barely even read manga growing up. I was very much invested in, like, drawn-out cartoons, like, your Sunday funnies and stuff. So the, the concept of a webtoon OST is a little bit foreign to me. But I'm not going to let that get in the way because I like Webtoon OSTs. I, I find them very in, intriguing to listen to. And we have Miss Hayes on one today. The song titled Over Parentheses A Hidden Truth for the Webtoon. Bunny, I'm the queen in this life. So, here we go. I haven't listened to Hayes really ever in the last like little while. Probably her feature on... Jihyo's solo. She did a song with I Am recently too, didn't she? Love how front and center her vocals are here, but also love the reverb on her voice. Interesting, like there isn't too much, like it's very evident that like the bass line and the vocals are front and center and now we're getting the middle range, middle instruments kind of growing a little bit, again that string section that's growing. Loud. I like that Hayes isn't being like too generous with the high tones and like she's she makes sure that whenever there is a high high phrase she takes it back down into that lower lower tone. It's over. You're over. Oh, wow, that song went by so quickly. That felt like two minutes 14, not three minutes 14, but wow. Over is actually a really interesting song for me because the progression of it feels so different to me. Like, this song, I feel like, does the extremes really well. For some reason, the way, like, the peak point in the song, in terms of how big and how loud it is, felt really high. Admittedly, I did have the volume maxed out on accident, so if it was a little bit too loud, I can only apologize, uh, retrospectively apologize for that. But just going from that really loud high point to that very end when it just drops all the way down. I feel like that sheer drop was like the most pronounced max to min moment I've heard in an OST in a hot minute, actually. Ooh. But 
honestly, it's kind of exactly what I want for my Hayes OST in a way where it allows for her kind of, I don't know if smoky is the right word for it, but she's got this really almost mysterious sounding low mid range that I, not many people can do better than her. I think she, I think that like low mid tone is one of the coolest things about Hayes's like vocal ability. It's, she makes it sound so mysterious yet so smooth and so elegant as well. And then when she takes it up, her her vocal color shows up a little bit more, but she still maintains that really smooth fluidity in her voice. And then you pair that with just the gorgeous instrumental section with the really interesting mixing uh, idea of bringing that electric bass very forward in the second verse. I thought that was a really interesting touch. And then you fill the middle with string instruments. Like, yeah, that, the only way this could have been like more meat coated is if they had managed to squeeze in a brass instrument in there or two. And well, admittedly, I feel like a brass instrument would be kind of inappropriate for a song of this nature. So this is pretty much meat coated. Can't complain about that one bit. Eh, yeah. we keep her moving. We're jumping on over to Japan side one time, which has me a little bit nervous because Japanese TV companies are even more strict about um, cop copyright things of that nature. But this is why for the Fuji Terebi uh, drama Re Revenge in the End of Desire. I think it's a drama, it might be a film, I'm not so sure. Um, but this is for a Japanese work, and that's pretty much all the information I have on it. We have all eight members here. Of course, we had Sigmund to start this week, and that was very good fun. But when it comes to like group schizo OSTs, I'm trying to think of if I've heard any like full group Stray Kids OSTs. I feel like I haven't. It's usually one or two of the members, so this will be a good fun. Here we go. It's crunchy in a very interesting way. What a pretty chorus. Throwing a little bit of snarl in their hog. Lino's voice on this really suits him. Like, I think his vocal color on this song fits so well. The lines he's given and like the vocal range that Lino's vocal parts are given to him in fit really well. Love the flow switch there. Get a little bit playful with the rhythm. That pre-chorus, yeah, it's such a good setup for this chorus. It's it does exactly what it needs to do. That 
this, he got two part chorus. Nice long chorus. Yeah. Take it halftime one time, hello. What an interesting guitar edition there. Ooh, I am awesome. Wow, that final guitar part that came in in the final chorus really made me think. It's... When the guitar part comes in... It's here. Oh, we're gonna play this part again. It's almost like the vocal, like the unison whoa part and the guitar part is like fighting each other in a way. And I think that's really interesting. It's, without the guitar part, the vocal part sounds just fine. But that vocal whoa part, once the guitar is there, feels really bright in comparison to that guitar part. And I think that's such an interesting contrast because it only happens here. Ha. Huh. Very interesting. Um... But overall, it, it, it does have that crunch. It does have that heaviness to it. It's not very in your face, but admittedly, this is an OST, and that means the purpose of the song is going to be a little bit different than, you know, Stray Kids' studio releases and stuff like that. But honestly, MVP for me is Lino on this. Like, I love all the guys and how they sound in their music, but genuinely, and this happened during... Uh, La La La... La 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 la, and like th well, this past era that Stray Kids had, Lino has been really standing out to me in recent Stray Kids releases. This one in particular, like his voice just suits this so well. He sounds so comfortable in this song, and I don't know what it is about it that makes it different to any other like Stray Kids release that they've had, but his voice is such a good fit for this. And then have Han with the little snarl in in one uh, one part of the chorus too, and just being able to kind of flex that high vocal through certain members, flex the low vocal through certain members, but never feeling like they're purposely trying to shoehorn in like the not the funny elements, but like the iconic Stray Kids elements. Like they're not tr purposely. Like, shoehorning in a Felix low tone like we got Changbin doing some low parts we got Hyunjin doing some low parts they're not trying to shoehorn in a Sungmin and Aya and a high part it's all naturally woven in I think that makes listening to it just easy good stuff and then one more to go undefeated formed by XG for Valorant's VCT Pacific 2024. Now, look. If there's ever a video game company out there who knows how to make and how to get together an artist to make good music, Riot is up there. Like, if we're talking just off the top of my head, the... Uh, but like we had Gods, right? With New Jeans last year. Terrific song. Uh we had uh what's the new uh virtual group they made with Bacon in it? Uh but that group, of course, like KDA exists as well. And the little kind of bits and bobs that Riot have done 
with music in relation to their other works has been spectacular. Their track record has been terrific. And now you get XG on the scene. This could be a lot of fun. So let's check this one out. This is how we're going to finish off our Saturday this week. So let's, let's hopefully end it on a high. Here we go. We about to blow. Caught him with the left, I leave him tucked out on the floor. Sounding itchy, sticky, swishy, watch me bank a score. Up in the boat, I'm yeah. in the zone, yeah, yeah. Coach you to fire the breath. Kim with a jungle and beat my chest. They say I'm posing the play. Switch up the flow one time. Ring on my finger, but yes. Like playing chess and I don't even sweat. That's what I call it finesse. That's what I call it finesse. Ain't no rivals, ain't no rivals. Get vocal with it. They can try, but they're never ever slowing me down. I quite like the big contrast between like the rap verse and the melodic uh, pre-chorus. Like that contrast is huge. And they're not trying to like bridge that gap. They're purposely treating it separate. Because like this part, very minimal in terms of the melodic elements in any part of the song. But switch it. Big melodic moment, right? And then we're back at this kind of bouncy beat that XG we know can do so well. But it's still retaining an element, an air to the melodic element, right? It's not just purely rhythmic anymore. Nice melody change there. This song's incorporated the melodic elements in a really interesting way. That's really interesting. The, comp the composition for that is really interesting. So, what Undefeated does with the vocal part is the vocals, or the melodic vocals, I should specify, is the riser in the song. So, this entire song, from a kind of stylistic point of view, at least from where I'm sitting, is that very rhythmic, very kind of... I don't want to call it flat because that's not what I'm trying to say. That very simple, pure, like very rhythmically focused, like that is kind of the whole shtick of this song to an extent. But by having the entire song be just rhythmic, it's not very exciting because you can only do so much with like flow switches. So, and you know, when you have members vocally capable of going a little bit crazy with the vocals, with the melodic vocals one time. It can get really kind of experimental with how you weave them in. And with Undefeated, they've kind of allocated the pre-chorus and the bridge to the vocal part. And essentially what they've done, either intentionally or unintentionally by doing that, is they're allowing the vocals to have that kind of big moment but not in the traditional like pop song way you listen to a pop song the big vocal moment is that long held note in the final chorus that's usually how it goes with this they've used the vocal power of the xg vocal line 
to build up the energy leading into the hook, the undefeated. Like, we'll go to the pre-courses here-ish. So we'll let the beat kind of... Like, up until that point, you really get no real traits or, like, bits and pieces of an evident melod like, moving melodic line anywhere really then you get for the transition the kind of vocal harmony that just grows out of thin air seemingly and then switch gears even the mixing of the song completely switches here and then we're into this hook now and that hook has more of a kind of flowing melodic element to it in comparison to the verses and it's almost like it's carrying over some of the melodic traits from that big growing pre-chorus and they've mashed it with the the rhythmic bounciness of the verse part honestly i think it's executed very well i really enjoyed it i still think that pre-chorus is freaking glorious though mm. okay I think I managed to survive the entire thing and I don't really remember all the little bits and pieces and like the at a detailed level what I said for the earlier songs but this was a fun lineup of OSTs I feel like OST Saturdays are always going to be a mixed bag in terms of how I'm going to receive it whether I'm going to be like musically invested in it or if I'm going to be really tired from just like breaking down every little thing but this week, I feel like I didn't say too much, apart from... Hey. Stray Kids is Why and XG's Undefeated, I definitely spent a good amount of time, like, walking through. And I feel like, overall, this week's was pretty easy to listen to. Like, there weren't too many songs where I had to, like, sit down and properly think about what I was going to say. Like, if ever... I just kind of sat back and enjoyed listening to it. And honestly, in the condition that I'm in today, I'm not going to complain about that one bit. Um, favorite from this week? I know, End Flying Star was really good. Sungmin's Destiny was really good. I'd probably say one of those two would take my pick from this week. But that's going to be it from me today with this week's roundup of OSTs. Mind you, we try and do this every single week. There's also a backlog of stuff from the past four months that I need to get around to. I think I'm going to be doing the month of December today. Uh, I don't know who's on that short list because I don't have it pulled up at the moment. But we'll get around to those. We'll run through those OSTs in some capacity moving forward to play a little bit of catch-up. So if you're interested in any more OSTs, keep your eyes peeled for those. But that is it for me today. Thank you all for watching along with me. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. One last request from me today. Let's work together as a community to bring a little bit of extra happiness back into the world. Whether it be checking with your friends and family, holding the door open for somebody, or even picking up a piece of trash off the street. Just one small act of kindness may brighten up someone else's day to day. And know that wherever you are in the world, should you ever be going through a tough time in your life, for whatever reason it may be. Even though I'm just some guy in the internet who waffles about music in his free time, you know that I will always be a friend, ally, and a shoulder to lean on whenever you need me. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, spread the love, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.